sirens they bleed Fall nations tailgating and the rearing to go Yeah, when kneeling gets to rocking, it's a hell of a show And man, you won't believe that roar When the boys find the checker Here we are. <laughs> we're live. What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Vols Deep Podcast. We're very excited to be able to film and, and get this going. Um, going to kind of start off with some introductions. Uh, I can go first. I go by the Vol Daddy. Um, diehard Tennessee fan. I don't care if it's underwater basket weaving. Uh, I'm pulling hard for the big orange. Um, I got the Josh Hopple leg tattoo. Uh, made me famous, I guess. From ESPN to um, people wanting pictures at the local gas station. I love talking sports. Neyland's heaven on earth. Um, my handle's Vol Daddy. So go ahead, Corb. I'm Corbin Rogers. I'm here. Uh, Luke invited me to be on this podcast. I'm very grateful for it. This is going to be a fun, fun, exciting experience. Bring you all some content each and every week. I'm a big sports fan. If you a lot of you already know, but if you don't know me, I'm a big sports fan from sports, NASCAR, or wrestling. It don't matter. I'm like a sports-like encyclopedia in a kind of a way. That's what I was about to say. So, uh, Spank? Well, what is there not to say about me and what all I've done? I'm not only – I'm the Spank here, everybody, uh, or Spanky, whatever y'all want to call me. Uh, I not only coach football, coach basketball, coach softball, I coach baseball – uh, I coach it all, really. I'm also a pro wrestler. I'm a newly converted Vol. I've uh, been baptized in the Tennessee River. Uh, and uh, all my former non-Tennessee sins have been washed away. But I'm happy to finally be a VFL. I'm happy to be a member of the Volunteer Club. And I'm very excited for this podcast here. Because look, baby, we Vols deep. Well, you left out the most important part. You're a ladies man. That's right. I'm the women's pet and the men's regret. <laughs> so, uh, about the podcast, um, this is our first episode ever. Um, I'm curious how bad we're going to screw it up. But we're going to cover everything Tennessee, maybe throw in some you know, random trending topics. We're going to do lives, we're going to do giveaways, player interviews, coach interviews, and uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. I don't know if I missed anything there. Test beta number one. <laughs> and the topics for today is we're going to talk about Tennessee's 2023 football schedule. We're going to break down each game. We're going to get down in depth on which game is most important for Tennessee. Um, we're going to talk predictions, trap games. We have the duel. We have our entertaining Florida, Alabama, Georgia game. Um, we're going to talk a little Tennessee baseball. Just hang tight. I uh, want to thank the Fairview Union for the great music that they put out, local musicians who've become very popular. They let us use their music for their show. So we'll hear from some of our sponsors, and we'll be right back. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's the Vol Daddy. I want to give a big shout-out to the Fairview Union. Great musicians, local people, Chad's from my hometown. They were gracious enough to let us use their music for our podcast. Make sure you check them out. They're huge Tennessee fans. You won't be disappointed. Let's hear them play. Man, you won't believe Since July of 2021, our student athletes have capitalized on so many NIL opportunities that have been presented to them. Those opportunities exist because of the power of Vol Nation. When you combine the most passionate fan base in the country with the city of Knoxville and our great state, 
you create the nation's number one NIL destination for student athletes. There's no better place for our players to build their brands than right here at Tennessee. I encourage all of you to support and donate to Spire Sports and Our Lady Ball Booster Collective. These collectives are here to serve our student athletes the right way in our community. To get involved, please scan this QR code now. It's been an incredible fall for our program and we are just scratching the surface of what we can accomplish. Let's all do our part to ensure that Tennessee continues to lead the way in name, image, and likeness. Go Big Orange. All right, and we're back. Um, next, we've got the weekend recap. Um, and this is going to be just like Tennessee news. During the season, we're going to do Neyland's game maxims. Um, each game, we're going to go through the game maxims and, and determine if Tennessee was able to accomplish that maxim or not. But as, as of now, we're going to talk some Tennessee baseball. Um, what's going on? How far they can make it? Um, so Tennessee baseball, they lose in the SEC tournament opener last week. Pitching was good, but horrible at the plate. One hit all game for the Vols. It, it's just plain simple. Like, you got to hit the ball. In baseball, you, you can play good defense, you can pitch well, and it can be three and outs, three and outs, three and outs. At the end of the day, you can't win the game if you can't score. And it's just plain simple. You got you got to hit. And baseball's one of them game, one of them sports. You know, one day you might be way up here, the next day you might be just way down here. But we just gotta find consistency going into tournament play. Well, all season we've been up and down throughout the board, pretty much. I mean, out from outfielding to pitching to batting, we've been up and down. And uh, it's not like we're up against bad competition in that point either. I mean, the SEC this year, we started out this year. I think 11 out of 14 teams in the SEC was ranked top 25 to start the yeah. season. And right now, there's nine projected teams to go to the NCAA tournament. They might so. as well just rename it the SEC tournament part two. So Because, like, really, like, is there really any other NCAA teams that, like – like, I'm not, I'm not trying to, like, you know, shoot on anybody here. But, like, honestly, it's like – it's the SEC or everybody else. It pretty, much, pretty much that's what it is. I mean, SEC is so stout in baseball at the moment. It's just it, – if you think, oh, Tennessee lost this game, they lost this game – I mean, we may have performed bad, but there's a lot of teams that you see that just they are legit mm -hmm. at the moment. And and the thing about Tennessee is, it's like last year was just such an amazing year. It really was. But when you lose, what was it, nine guys to the MLB draft? Like nine. Like teams don't recover from that. Like mo most programs will not recover from that. Luckily, uh, Coach Tony, he he's got them in the right direction. They're still young. They still need to – I just don't think this team, you know, has you – know, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, yeah. they don't have that same mojo, that swagger about they them. They had to find themselves, I think. They tried to kind of mimic. They tried year. to, but it just doesn't work. And you got to be yourself. And, like, I think this team, they're still trying to find their identity. But, hey, they're young. Okay, like, if they all stick together, I, I think – Big things will be coming soon for them. Yeah, I mean, Tennessee has the players to go all the way. They have the coaching to go all the way. But what they don't have right now is consistency to, yeah. to go all the way. Um, I mean, how, how far do you all think they make it? I think we make it pretty far in Super Regionals. I don't think we make the College World Series. I hope we do. I really I do. Hope we hope, do man. I hope we do. I, I mean, there's a good chance we do make the College World Series. Like, I'll say this, like, Last year, like in basketball, that's what I was telling Luke, uh, in basketball, we were so good last year. You know, ranked number one and everything and made the NCAA tournament and got put out right away. This year, we was kind of like, well, it was really great at some point and then we went down the hill a little bit and we made the NCAA tournament and all that and got kind of like a mid-pack mid, mid -pack seed and we're right. going really far in the tournament. So, it maybe that's a like game – I mean, but it's not a bad place to be in either because there's a lot of mid-teams you can play that way to make your way through the tournament. Right, and the, the latest projections I've seen have us playing, you know, Wake Forest or at Wake Forest. And, I mean, I, I like, you know, I like being right there just because kind of what we talked about like just a second ago, just when you're in the SEC, I mean, a lot of these teams just don't, you know, they just don't have it. And Tony, it, Tony, I'm not like sitting here saying he threw the game or, you know, in the tournament, but um, I mean, he he was pretty confident and optimistic that, you know, hey, we're just going to get some rest. And I mean, that might be the best thing for him. It could be. Like in the long run, like Luke said, it could be the best thing for him. 
Could yeah, be. I mean, I'm optimistic. I'm not expecting like a huge run. And this Tennessee's biggest reason for me is they struggle so much on the road. Um, I'm not hating or doubting. Just simply trying to protect myself from heartbreak. Um, I think, but uh, we'll see where Tennessee ends up. Um, Tennessee has won back-to-back championships. Uh, the SEC All Sports Champion Award is given to the athletic program who has the most overall wins. It's a men's and women's combined uh, award. Just discuss the importance in the current state of, of Tennessee athletics. I honestly think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we're on the verge of seeing the greatest run in Tennessee athletics history. I like it. Like, uh, like, honestly, like, can you, like, there's been times, you know, hey, Lady Vols, boom, they win the natty. Men's have been on fire. Football wins the natty. Baseball been on fire. But have you ever seen a time where every sport coming together and just dominating the way they have? It's never happened in this program's history, honestly. Like, everybody comes together. Like, it's quite amazing at the moment. And it's crazy to think where we were, what was it, like three years ago when they were protesting outside of Neyland Stadium and because of a coach that nobody wanted, you, you thought, man, how, how much lower could it get? But that just proves that the bad times don't last forever, okay? Danny White, man, is – Danny White's turned around. I, he he has one hundred percent turned it around. He's he's put the right people in place. Uh, it, it is going to be interesting to see if bad times do start happening. How short that leash is. It, that's going to be interesting to see. It, it's all well and good. My dad always told me winning fixes everything, and winning truly does. But once you start losing, that's where we got to fix some things. But as I was saying earlier, I do think this is going to be the greatest run in Tennessee athletic history. Yeah, I mean, two words, and the Vol Club preaches it all the time, everything school. Um, Tennessee men's and women both finished first, you know, in, I guess, their divisions within the award. Um, softball finishes first. Obviously, this dominated everybody all year, regular season and SEC tournament. I mean, you've got Tennessee football. They're finishing second. You know, they're not – other sports are not carrying football right now. Uh, men's cross country second, women's swimming second, men's tennis second, men's swimming third, women's basketball third, men's golf third, women's tennis third, women's track and field third. I mean, I can go on, but all of this combined equals back-to-back championship trophy for the Tennessee Volunteers. Um, it, I don't know. It's just it's good to be this relevant again in every sport and. Mark my words, man. Um, as Tennessee fans, just get used to it. I think that I think that, like you said, we're 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 getting ready to on the we're on the verge right now. We're on the verge, and we need a national championship. Uh, mm-hmm. But but it's happening. I couldn't imagine being a school where you're just good at one sport. Like no, like, and like it's cool. Like Georgia, you know, whatever. But. Like, well, what do you do the rest of the year? Like, it's so nice being relevant in every single sport. It really is. It's it's almost like um, in like like back here at home in Cofield, it's like every sport here. Like, it's always there's always a winning tradition. There's always a, that winning mentality, and I think you've got to instill that into people. And like, you cannot instill a winning tradition and a winning culture without winning. And I think that's what we're doing right now. We're winning these games right now. We're creating this buzz. So then down the road, we can become that great, not only just football, basketball school, but everything in between. I think uh, it's we're in a really good position right now because of social media, oh, yeah. honestly. I mean, if you look to it, just sports in general, like athletes trying to get recruited 10 years ago, like it was very hard. Nowadays, with social media, the best the best can put their stuff out there, mm-hmm. no matter what school you're at. And the University of Tennessee is within that top-tier program now with all the other schools. They w- dominate w- the social media world, too. All right, Tennessee sells out the season ticket allotment. 70,500 season tickets have been sold. This was Danny White's goal. Um, they surpassed the goal last year, and then they really surpassed the goal this year. Um, 
he's already talking expansion, but we're going to save that topic for a different Man, show. Man, some, some stadiums are like you get 70 people in there, let alone 70,000. <laughs> like, my Lord. Don't be talking about, like, UTEP like that. Hey, I'm just saying, man, like, you ever been to Vandy? Like, crap, man. Like, that's like a away team's just um, family reunion. Like, it's like, hey, I know him from well, yeah, I'm back home. Tennessee's second home. Poor Vandy. <laughs> and they are expanding their stadium. Who, Vandy? Yeah. You got to be kidding me. You didn't see the TikTok I made? Because Vandy, Vandy put out these, these images of taking down the stadium, you know, to build new. And then I made a TikTok with, like, the Titanic sound saying that Vandy's finally gave up and people was all tore up. Really? Yeah. Well, I, mean, they, I bet they're going to build a library in that stadium. I'm just so, happy. So the kids can go from doing their homework inside the stadium, then when they're, they they score a touchdown, they can at least go watch it, then they go back to doing their homework, you know, in Vanderbilt. I'm just glad they're taking care of us like this. Yeah, I, I mean, appreciate it. We deserve – I mean, I mean, every other year we deserve a nice stadium to go mm-hmm. to over there. I had a cousin that went to Vanderbilt as a cheerleader, mm-hmm. and she said they're – Favorite chant was, hey, hey, it's okay. You're going to work for us someday. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Tennessee softball. What a year. Um, obviously, we're doing pre-recorded shows right now, so it's going to be hard to, to kind of talk about this um, in advance. But they beat Texas today. They play tomorrow, which is Saturday at 1.30. Um, basically, just want to give a, a shout-out to, to Tennessee softball and what they're doing, and I, I think they're going to make a – I make think really I think they're gonna run. make a good run. Like, just from watching it, like, and I love college softball. Like, I've I've always liked college fun, softball. Yeah. It just the intensity and the pace of it, and I love it. And I and I do think Lady Vols are doing big things right now. Yeah, I do too. And uh, all right, well, that was our weekend recap, and we're gonna go to our sponsors, and we'll be right back. We have our first main talking point of the day, uh, and that is sponsored by Big Orange Concrete Pumping. Um, all right, so we're going to go through each game on the schedule. Um, each of us are going to give our prediction for that game, and um, then we're going to get into everybody's overall prediction so we can uh, go back and after all the optimism grows and stuff, and we can see where we're where we're at towards the – uh, beginning of the season. So, Virginia at Nashville, initial thoughts. Who do y'all got winning the game? Tennessee, but in a close one. You think it's going to be close? I do. Really? I do think it'll be close. I, I, want, I want to say Milton's our guy, but I don't know. If he improves this year like he did last year between the offseason break from the year before, then he'll be great. But – it's it's untelling with him right now. I mean, he can come out and he may he may be a superstar. He may come out and he may not be what you think he's going to be. So we'll see. See, um, I got Tennessee winning too. Like I got I got balls, baby. But I do think it will be because look, you got to think Virgi- Virginia just a couple years ago they were playing in the Orange Bowl. So this team still has some signs of you know hey we're we're not just some Scrub that Tennessee's got to play. This is uh, a Power Five team, so I never, you never want to say you can get a blowout win against a Power Five team, but just the way this offense is, just keep on rolling, keep on rolling. Yeah, they've lost some big key pieces, like losing two of your best wide receivers and your quarterback. Like that's going to hurt, and there might be a couple bugs in the wrinkle because you got to think what this time week one last year they that team really did not truly identify themselves. It took them to what, probably Florida, maybe, to find out who they really were. Yeah. But uh, week one, I got a chance they win. 
I do too. Um, I, I'm kind of with Corbin a little bit. Um, I think it's going to be closer than, than people think. Um, it might be one of them games where fourth quarter comes and we're looking at the scoreboard and just kind of like, okay, let's, let's get the offense going. But I, I think Tennessee wins like, I mean, you know, handily, but I think it is going to be a little bit closer than what people think. Um, game two, we've got a tough one, Austin P at home. Hmm. I don't know if we win that one, boys. They might as well just call that one off. Yeah. You know, I'm telling you. Them, them P boys. Yeah. But, no, I got Vols by 50. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to agree with uh, with you two there. That'll be a 12 o'clock kick. We'll be, hey, we'll be back. Corbin will be feeling pretty good by 12 o'clock. I will be feeling pretty good by 12 yeah. o'clock. I'll be feeling good by 12 o'clock. I'll be ready to go hey, home by 2.30. I'll get to be in my bed by 3.30. There you go. Hey, as long as I get me a smoky dog or one of Hebrew National Hunt Dogs, I'll be pretty feeling good, too. The traffic might be pretty bad, man. We we sold out every game but one last year. So and that was a, the Thursday game against Ball State. I, I don't really remember going home last year. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and the next one we've got Florida going to the swamp. It's been 20 years. Since Tennessee's won the swamp. 2004, ain't it? Uh, three. Three? 2003. Yep. Um, see, I got that one down as a tough one. One, because, and Florida's got a whole lot of uncertainty going in. Like, they're still trying to figure out who their quarterback is. Uh, losing Anthony Richardson, who still kind of blows my mind. He went first round, but that's beside the point. But Florida, they... It's going to be interesting, Billy Napier's second year. It's this is I'm not going to say this is his make or break year, but this has to be the year he has to make improvements to this team. But then again, on Tennessee side of things, yes, you beat Florida last year, and that's great and good. But it's still, it's been over 20 years since you've gotten a win in the swamp, and even when Florida is bad, everyone here at this table knows. Florida, all you never count out Florida against Tennessee. Just like at the end of the game, the last eight minutes last year, Tennessee fans were they were still they were very happy they were winning, but they were like, "Oh, we've seen this before. We've seen the hail marys. We've seen the last second field oh, goals." When when Florida recovered the onside kick, you know, I was, it was like, "Oh, yeah," it was like, you know, just. I don't know. This, I, <laughs> this, I was you're just sitting my there and you're just like, you know, having flashbacks. Yeah. And, uh, it just, it's just rough. I man. still have – I have Tennessee winning in a close one. But just – they they say Gators get out of the swamp uh, – only Gators get out alive. But I think old Smokey and uh, old Hop Daddy, I think they find a way to win. Florida is just – this year I just don't – I mean, honestly, I see Florida winning like a – Two, three, four, probably three or four games this year. You know, oh, wow. it's the, the, the SEC. So oh. They should they should win four games this year. <laughs> so, but I don't see them doing much of anything this year. Just Florida. But I will say this: if they play Tennessee, when when we do play them, Florida is going to play us tough. Just like all them years that we was like bad and Florida was good, we always played them tough. And they're going to do us an exchange this year. Like, we're going to be good, but Florida's going to play us, us tough because that's just how it works. Florida's – that's a, that's one of those games that just – no matter what, it's going to be a tough game for us to win. But I do think we win. We're going to win that game. They, but it's going to be closer than what everybody thinks it is. That game right there, Tennessee and Florida, with the history it has on it, it doesn't matter your record. It doesn't matter where you're going, where you've been. It All it matters is – at the end of the day, who can strap on their chin strap the tightest? Who can put that mouthpiece in, and who can get that win? At the end of it's the day? A, it's a truth, like you said. Don't matter the record. We could be zero and six and play them, and we'll play them tough. And they can be six and zero. I mean, you can put a middle place. school team in Florida uniforms, and they're going to play Tennessee tough. I mean, yeah. It's. I mean, go back to to Lyle Butch Lyle Jones. I mean, what were some of them scores like? What was that one? Nineteen twenty or nine? No, twenty seven, twenty eight. There was a nine to ten. Yeah, the nine to ten one. Yeah, Treon yeah, Harris yeah. coming and, in. And then Butch Jones' team should have should have easily beat Florida. Mm-hmm. Um, but tough years. Uh, Florida's down. I mean, you see the or I seen the the spring game. This is bad. It was awful. Um, quarterbacks, quarterbacks in that game just looked. 
terrible. It, they're, they're just... They still don't have an identity. And it shocks me they didn't try to go get somebody out of the transfer portal after the spring game. But... Scared money don't make money. Yeah, I guess it... I guess scared don't, money don't make money, but if you ain't got no money, you gotta... You gotta get some money, I guess. Well, they like to promise the recruits money, but then they can't fulfill yeah. that. But... I've got I've got Tennessee winning in the swamp. Um, I do think it. I think it's going to be close. Um, but I, it, it's time. It's our turn for a streak. Um, and my biggest thing is, if not now, when are we going to win in the swamp? Okay. I think this is the best time to do it. So I, Tennessee comes out of the swamp uh, victorious. Next, we've got UTSA, the Roadrunners at home. Well, let's just not mean to interrupt you here, Corbin, but uh, I think we spent enough time he meant discuss, to do that. discussing um, the Florida game. I just say we can all agree. Vols with Fitty. No. Versus you. Are you no. serious? Vols with Fitty. Okay. No. No. U- UTSA is not a pushover team. <laughs> They've been shown to like do upsets before. And play very competitive, no matter who they play. I mean, okay, fine, fine, fine. Balls by forty-five. There, <laughs> I'll give you that. There you go. You, you can guess that they're going to be a top. They're, I mean, they're going to be a preseason top twenty-five, top twenty team. They're, they're always very consistent and very like when they play. Like who they play a few years ago was SEC team. I forget who it was, but they was it. It was a very close game, and they played like a Big Twelve team, and it was like. Very close game, and it's like UTSA always is in nail biter games, no matter who they play, and they always end up winning the conference, going to like a big bowl game, being yeah, top twenty five. Like they're always upsetting somebody, and, and they're a new team too. They've only been a team for like what twelve years or something. So um, yeah. So do you have the Vols winning? I have them winning. It's just it, it's going to be like we may win by like. 14, 20 points, but it ain't going to be like a 60-point blowout, you know no, what I mean? No one here ever said 60. I'm giving you 45, brother. <laughs> giving you a good number. Well, I, um, I've, got, I've got Tennessee winning, too. I, I believe that the, they're going to handle business, um, but we, we can talk a little bit more in depth on, on the trap game here in a minute. Um, the one I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, I'm not like, Full on, like this is the game that, you know, the game of the the season or something like that. But South Carolina at home. This is the revenge game. Oh, it's a revenge game, hundred percent. But some people act like this is like Georgia, you know, and it's not. It's, but it's not. It, it. But it's it's going to be a huge, huge game at home. It'll be sold out. Oh. Oh, yeah. it, and it'll be it, sold out. And full they're gonna be rocking. Of. What what's the no, what's Neyland's capacity? I know it's. I'm gonna tell you, it'll be full of nothing but pissed off volunteers in the color. You know they'll probably checkerboard that thing, and it'll be nothing but pissed off people wanting the heads of Shane Beamer and them Gamecocks for everything they did to us last year. They they not only cost us the quarterback, they cost us a but. Potential college football playoff berth. Because you cannot tell me we don't lose that game, we don't have a shot getting in. Oh, if, if we won that game last year, uh, oh, definitely. Josh we, Hopple is in the college football playoff yeah. year too. And then it also costs us, I believe, a Heisman Trophy. Yeah. I believe I, I if Hendon Hooker that. did not get injured that. that game, and I get it, it ain't no one from South Carolina's fault that he got injured. I'm not trying to say that. Don't cancel me, Gamecock Nation. <laughs> I'm just saying that game was not a good night to be a ball. I was oh. at that game and I just. I'm surprised you remember. Every, Barely. <laughs> well, every single like top five team struggled that day, and I just kept. Mm-hmm. I was like, we're gonna be fuck it. That we're is, gonna be okay. That is right. And every every one of them. I remember being at that game down in South Carolina and just being down there tailgating. And this one dude had TV on. We just going to game to game to game, and everybody just kept losing. All the good teams just kept losing and losing. I was like, "Oh, we got it made. We got it yeah. made." And we walk in, and that, that, that's my thing too. Is I was like, "Okay, all these other top fives are gonna, are looking bad. You know, we're about to, you know, we're gonna I was, put it on them." And I was like a scientist that day, like doing numbers and everything in my <laughs> head, like the whole time, like. But 
everything that happens that day, whether it was on the field or not, that's just something we just need to forget about, I guess. Yeah. Um, so, Spain's got the win. Corbin, do you got the win? Yeah. Yeah. Got the win. I've got the win, too. Um, man, Josh Heupel's not going to – Tennessee's going to win big. He ain't um, calling off the dogs. He's now. not calling – and we're talking about real dogs. We're not talking about mutts, Georgia. We're talking about blue tick, Gerber, nah. He's not calling off Smokey. Swiss, yeah. No. I'm telling Josh Heupel is going to bend Shane Beamer over, and he's going to clap them fucking cheeks for him. That's right. That's that's what I, I, I'm fired up for that one. All right, and next we've got Texas A&M. See, that, one, that one's a tricky one. That's not my trap game. But that one's a tricky one because Texas A&M, they've been so, like, up and down these past few years. Like, oh, uh, Papa Jimbo, like, him and his little reading glass. And yeah. that. I'll tell you, I don't like – I've never liked Jimbo Fisher. Never have. Um, but he – if he makes it to Neyland, because you never know. You know he's on the hot seat right now, mm-hmm. even though – with the amount of money, there'll be some big donors in Texas probably take care of that money. Oh, money. Yeah. But $95 million for 10 years. Yeah, I know. That, that's coming back to bite them. Um, but if if Jimbo makes it that game, it could be it could be one of them ones that's a third quarter, end of the third quarter ball game. Or, you never know, it could be a halftime ball game. It, it just matters on uh, – I, I do think we'll be feeling pretty good after South Carolina. But it's not my trap game. My trap game's coming up. Well, Texas A&M has Bobby Petrino mm. as offensive coordinator coming in. Is that and the motorcycle dude? No, uh, he was the dude that uh, coached Louisville and got Louisville so good a few years ago. Yeah, he's a motorcycle dude. Arkansas got the little that got in the motorcycle wreck with that uh, young girl in the neck brace. Yeah, that's Bobby. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. yeah. He, he he's not a very good person. Well, no. well, if they let him uh, play offense, if Jimbo lets him play off, offensive coordinator, I think they got a good shot at being good this year. I agree with that. But if Jimbo wants to control the team and just be a one-man show, then – Yeah, because if we're talking players, Jimbo's brought in – I mean, he's lost a lot in the portal, but – But a and always good about the – brought in some studs. They're always so great about the quarterbacks, too. Mm-hmm. you got to remember that. Like, Texas A&M is really good at bringing in good quarterbacks. I will say that. But I, we're going to win. Okay. I think pretty hefty. But I just hate the color of maroon. Like, the, I, don't, I don't get it. Like, yeah, I'm not a maroon. Like, what are you trying to – yeah. are you red or are you purple? Like, what are you? Like, yeah. make up yeah. your mind, brother. Yeah, but Mississippi State does have some good – we're getting off topic. Mississippi State does have some good-looking uniforms, though. I guess, um, but – but, I like the helmets. The helmets, it, the, the logo. I will say that the logo yeah, is pretty cool. I, I, yeah. Plus, plus the pirate, he made it even better. Yeah. R.I.P. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So Corbin's got to win. Spanky's got to win. I've got to win as well. And you've got to think, Tennessee has a bye week before Texas A&M comes in, and Josh Heupel is very good with with a bye, with a bye week. So I've got to win as well. Next, we have Alabama on the road. Alabama. The hungry Crimson Tide. Well, this one's going to be a tough one because let's just say a Nick Saban team that needs extra motivation is usually a team that's one you don't want to mess with. And um, I I get it. I saw somebody predict the other day, I can't even remember, that Alabama was going to be 9-3. and I just cannot physically see that in my lifetime. Being through what we've had to be through with Coach Saban and Alabama, I just cannot physically see it with my own eyes, them going 9-3 and three and just having a down year. So you like don't that. think Saban's on the decline? I, I do not. I, I really don't. I think what will get Saban is uh, death or taxes, one of the two. <laughs> um, but it's in Tuscaloosa, just like going back to the South Carolina – Game for us. There's going to be however many thousands of pissed off, uh, toothless inbreds that pissed <laughs> off. Like they're going to be very mad at us. They're going to be saying words we don't understand here in the Appalachians. Dixie land of lights, our song. Yeah, they'll be saying that, and they'll be saying roll tide, 
they'll be doing it all night long and they'll be spending their dollar. And um, But I'm going to go... This is going to be pretty bad. But I got Tennessee losing this one. Okay. Right. That's just me. I, I want him to win. But Josh Hopper was really good year one going to Tuscaloosa, too. He was. But yeah, like I said, you cannot, and I will never. As until long Jeff took over, but Tennessee was down, what, 38 players? Mm-hmm. I'll never in my lifetime bet against an Nick Saban team. Never. I don't. I'll just never bet against them. Corbin, what do you think? Well, you're talking about toss-up games. This is a toss-up game okay. right here. Uh. I don't think Nick Saban's on the – I do think he's on the decline. But I when agree. I say Nick, when I say he's on the decline, I don't think he's like three-game loss decline. I think it's like – Yeah, I mean, Nick Saban's decline is like <laughs> – One or two losses. Still better than everybody, you know. Like, yeah. He, he's still going to like compete for an SEC championship. He may not win one. He may not even make it to it, but he's going to be right there at the end of the season to go to it. So, it's it's a tough game. I don't – let me think uh, – Tuscaloosa, what we done last year, we have to win to back up what we done last year. I do feel that. That would be awesome to go back to back against Alabama. It, it would be awesome. I just there would be a lot of fans calling for Nick Saban's job. I'm going to say Tennessee wins this Tennessee, game. I love it. I'm going to say we win this game. I hope so. Hope so. I'm, going to, I'm going to say that we win this game. And I, by less than seven points. Yeah, oh, it, it will be. I would love to beat him by a field goal again. Oh that, yeah, that would be hilarious. Um, but I'm it's, with I'm with Spank on this one, and it it's a toss up game. Um, I, last year I said Tennessee would go ten and two, and a lot of people thought I was crazy. I said Tennessee would would either beat Bama or they would beat Georgia, and then they was going to lose one that they shouldn't. And that's what they did last year. I kind of getting the same vibe this year. Um, I think it's going to be close. I don't think anybody is going to um, just just manhandle this team. But yeah, I've got I've got a loss going into Tuscaloosa. And next we've got Kentucky on the road. Mark, well, as you see, Kentucky they they lost their their great uh, fearless leader, and uh, Will Levis, or Will. <laughs> Pepys, I don't, I don't know. I got lucky now. He plays. He's with the Titans. I got lucky. No, I don't. I don't care nothing about it. Um, I got Tennessee winning this one. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of iffy. If Tennessee goes in there and they beat Alabama, that it's one of them deals. It could be a trap game, but I think if if with my prediction, I think Tennessee will be motivated enough that I just feel bad for Kentucky. You got me really wondering. Looking at the rest of the schedule, what the trap game is. All right, Corbin. Beat Kentucky. I mean, I love Kroger Field. I always say this about Kentucky. They got a great stadium. It's beautiful, ain't it? Can you buy groceries there? <laughs> they actually, I will say this. Whenever you are at the at the stadium and you're, like, going in the stadium, they will give you, like, free food CD items. Is that curbside or? Really? Uh, like oh, side like the stuff you, like you order on the app or whatever. Yeah. I've never done that before. I don't know what you're talking about. But uh, yeah, uh, like they like give you like all kinds of like free stuff, like going in, going out, and, like just tailgating and all that throughout the day. Like it's like a foods, no, not food city, Kroger, Kroger ordeal. Yeah, what they do. But I will say that I like I do like that. That's pretty nice. I, I heard heard checkout for Tennessee's in the end zone. So is um, I mean. Uh, is Kroger going to carry the, the Cats to victory? No. No. Uh, <laughs> that's the best thing they got going. That's that's That was my whole point. They got, that's we'll, the best we'll, thing they got we'll going show, is Kroger. We'll show <laughs> it like the real time who's the real checkerboard school. And, yeah, I don't even know why they have checkerboard. Like No, that. I mean. That is right. If somebody from Kentucky. Checkerboard, now they're calling their K the power K. I can't not stand Oh, my Lord. Thing. Just go back to playing basketball, which, honestly, you ain't been good at that in the past few years. Right. So. Go back to banjo playing, I guess. I don't know. All right, next on the schedule, we've got the Huskies, the Yukon Huskies at home. Um, I think this is going to be one of them ones where we break out. I'm not saying we got a baby blue uniform, but I would like to see a um, like a helmet decal, like, you know, the Tennessee 
the power tee outlined in that summit blue. That's because that's, that's a good game for it. Yeah, I, I think it is. And um, which one day, hey, heck, you never know. Our old buddy down at Ole Miss, he likes to do the that baby blue. So I guess why can't we do some? Summit blue, whatever. We did add a little summit blue last year. Yeah, had some accessories. I'm talking about like full. Oh, you, you want know. to go full blown summit blue? Yeah, why not? Uh, Lady Vols are doing it. Why can't men's do it? You know, I'm, I'm here for equal rights, everybody. <laughs> like that's that's what I'm here so for. That, so if Tennessee goes full summit blue, they're not losing to UConn. Right? Um. You know, oh, you know that's actually a good idea. Like to honor, to, to honor Pat Summit and everything, like that would be pretty badass. Because to you be got, honest with you. Because you got to think, oh, Coach Gene, he's not going to be coaching the football team, so why not? Let's do it. <laughs> All right. So uh, win from Spank. I'm guessing win from Corbin as well on UConn. Oh yeah, UConn just. I don't know the last time UConn's been good at football. Well, they win every year, like two, three games, something like that every year. Yeah, it's it's going to be bad. Um, it'll be a great game for. I heard in football practice they uh they practice um defense by boxing out every day. So that's okay. when I heard they're doing football practice and they work Gino on Gino out there. Yeah, oh Gino. All right, so then we go to to Missouri. Here it is. Here's my trap this game. This is your trap game. My trap game. Cause um Luke, tell the people what's the week after Missouri. Uh, we got them. Got the Bulldogs. I got them 50-year-old barking men that me and Corbin seen down in Athens last year. Dog collars on their buddies holding them back on a leash. Got the, yeah. They got the, got the field goal kicker that they've been this, kicking for them for the past 15 years. I believe this is the trap game because here, here's my reasons. Hear me out, everybody. At this point, Missouri's coach, he's on the hot seat. And usually when your coach is on the hot seat, there's always that one game at the end of the year – the team rallies around and tries to stick it out for their coach. And I think this could be the game for Missouri to do that. Number two, more than likely, it's going to be a noon kickoff in what, late October, early November? I don't even know what the date be, is. I'm sure it'll be cold in Missouri. It's going to be cold. That place always looks dry. It never looks lively. It's always dull. No fans. There, there's there's no umph about it. And then second to final point, you cannot tell me that an 18 to 23-year-old kid is not thinking about probably one of the biggest games the following week. It, it you, you just cannot tell me. Uh, and I know coaches will say, hey, we're just – one opponent at a time, one one opponent at a time, one week at a time. That's good. That's great coaching talk. But you got to be realistic. These are these are kids we're dealing with. These are teenage men going into men. They got they're going to have their mind set on Georgia. That this could be the trap game. That you know, I'm not going to say Tennessee's going to lose it, but it's going to be very closer than what we want it to so be. So what am I putting in the column? Am I putting an L uh, or am I putting a dub? You're going, we're going to put a dub. Put a dub, all right. Because, hey, as long as that power T is on the field against the old Tiggers of Mizzou, it's a dub. The only reason I don't see that being a trap game, um, I, mean, I, I, I get your points, is I kind of thought that last year against Kentucky before we went to Georgia. And we just curb stomped Kentucky. So I think, um, I mean, could be wrong. I just, I feel like, Josh Heupel does a really good job preparing, um, you know, his team on a weekly basis. Um, so I've got a win. What do you think, Corbin? Oh, I got a win against Missouri. I mean, no doubt. I mean, Missouri's just the Missouri. Honestly, I mean, when's the last time Missouri was relevant? When they had a little run when in the SEC East. When was yeah, that? when they first came. When they, when they first, first joined the SEC, they had. After that, it, it went downhill from here. Yeah. Even old Hop Daddy couldn't help them. Same thing with Texas. A&M. Well, I'll tell you, it was whenever when they first joined was when Johnny Manziel was at Texas A&M. Mm-hmm. And that was 2012, I think it was. It was, it was around I think it's 2012 yeah. was when yeah. Johnny Manziel was there. So they had to run for like two years, yeah. but they haven't been relevant since then. I will say I don't think it's a noon kick. I think Missouri would be a seven o'clock kick because that time of year is when SEC likes to put games at like seven o'clock and SEC Network Plus or SEC Network, all them extra yeah. channels they got. So, all right. So three three dubs versus Missouri. Now the big one. Um, it's been already called the biggest game of 
2023 has been called the most hostile environment of 2023. Georgia comes to Neyland. Hey, before we even go anywhere, most hostile environment. Me and Luke was there last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, they claim they had the loudest fan base in the nation that, that game that day. Me and Luke sitting in the stands, and it's like, like the decibel reading on the board yeah, they have on the big screen is yeah. like 125, and it's like oh, we was just talking to each other like yeah, talking to each other like it's nothing. It's like oh, you hear people cheering and screaming, but it's over the audio, and you look down on the fans, and there's nobody doing nothing. They're just sitting on their hands. Oh yeah, up top they've got they got I don't know the exact footage, but they've got speakers just everywhere. Oh, and they was pumping sound. And Man, it, they was pumping sound. Claiming, oh, we're 125 decibels right now, and everybody just sitting on their hands. Yeah. And I, was, and I looked at Luke, and I was like, There's, what are they doing uh, over there? I mean, it was loud. <laughs> it was hot. No, it, it, it don't touch Neyland. Wow. No, okay. not even close. All right, Spank. This is going to be a tough one. It's going to be a... Rocking and rowdy crowd. They're gonna be hanging from the rafters up there in Neyland. They ain't even got rafters, but they're gonna be hanging from them. I can I can find one if you want me to. Um, no, they'll probably be hanging from the goalpost after the game, though, because I'm going with down goes the dogs. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Love it. Who's Missouri to beat Georgia? <laughs> <laughs> no, I got no, I got us beat Missouri. Oh, you got us beat Missouri. It was a trap game. Yeah. Okay, trap okay. Game. I, I thought I thought you I thought you said we lost Missouri. No, I was no. Like, uh, Georgia, I hate to say it, but we lose Georgia. Corbin said we lose to Georgia. I hate to say it. I mean, as we go throughout the season, and we as as we go out the season, I mean, it may it'll probably change. It may change. You never Optimism know. But, grows, and that's kind of why we're doing this right now. But right now, right now, the past two years, I mean, Georgia's been so dominant. It's and right now, the recruiting class. I mean, I know they've had some problems here recently, but right. uh, but still, it's over. They're, they're, they're the number one team in all of football. The, right now, Georgia is becoming the Alabama. What it, Alabama was for the past fifteen right. years, taking the blueprint, rolling with. It. Over and under. How many times does Kirby Smart throw his visor or do the whole his hands out here hollering at the refs, just complain about something? Over or under. What do you think? How many? Five. I'm gonna go five. Over or under five. <laughs> mm, five's a tough number. Um, I'm gonna go over because that crowd's gonna be insane. Yeah, and he, he's gonna. He's going to go on about how they can't hear the cadence and all that stuff. Well, yeah. And he's made a lot of comments kind of poking Josh Heupel and kind of how his quarterbacks play and the system and stuff like that, too. So, there's just going to be a lot of – after last year, too, there's going to be a lot. I mean, there's going to be a lot of hostility going on. I think so, Georgia too. Comes. I and, feel like what Georgia's going to have a good running game this year. Yeah, I've got <coughs> – I don't know. I, I said it last year. Tennessee would would split between Georgia and Bama, and I'm saying it this year too. Tennessee beats Georgia in Neyland Stadium. And that's I'm sticking to it. I'm All right, about. the big one, the R State battle, Vandy. Vandy, Wandy. Well, I will I will say this about the old uh, Commodores. I do love their music. Uh, I do love. Uh, that, that's country music, son. <laughs> that's playing from the streets down the road. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's that, Luke Combs, yeah, Morgan no, Wallen. No, 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 no. No, I love. Are going there to, to play? No, music. I love the Commodores, man. Like easy, like Sunday morning. Like <laughs> I, I love the Commodores. I love them. It's like why well, I'm easy. I'm easy like Sunday morning. And I think when Lionel Richie was writing that song for the Commodores, he was thinking <laughs> about this game right here. It's going to be easy like Sunday morning. I got I got balls by <laughs> 50 right here. I like it. Y'all don't even know who I was talking about, the Commodores. Y'all y'all never heard of the Commodores? It's like she's going to break. Mm, mm, house. I mean, I've heard the song. Yeah, man. Come oh, on. Oh, I know the song. Yeah. Young cultured people. It, it's in some movie I've saw before. Oh, <laughs> All right, Corbin, Bandy, who you got? Uh, I mean, this is a very tough one right here. I'm telling you what. 
Vandy, they got the quarterback game, the running back game, the wide receiver game, <laughs> defensive game. I mean, they're all well, across heck, you the board. You can buy games at GameStop. <laughs> you can buy games at GameStop, buddy. All across the board, Vandy's so, like, outstanding. <laughs> oh, Tennessee by, like, 63 to – 14. Yeah. Oh, man. Don't be too mean. Let's That's do 62. Right. So, every single one of us have Tennessee going 11 and 1. I would gladly take that. Now, 11 and 1. See, I had Georgia losing. I mean, beating us. Spanky had. What's that losing Vanderbilt, brother? Yep. Corbin's got a loss to Georgia. Spanky's got a loss to Bama. And the Valde has a loss to Bama. So, trap game, Spanky has already gave his. Corbin, what would be your trap game if there is one? Out of all of them? Mm-hmm. Uh, probably South Carolina. South Carolina's a trap game. I'm going to go UTSA just because Tennessee is going to be looking ahead. South Carolina. That, that is true. That's like a worst thing uh, every year. Like, we look ahead so much on, like, the little that's why, games. That's why we're looking ahead. And that, yeah, that's kind of what, I mean. I, that's what worries me about Virginia's game is we look ahead. Kind of, and that happens every single year, it seems like. Um, I'm not, I mean, I'm not worried about Texas San Antonio, but if there was one, to me, like, Missouri's SEC team, so I feel like that. We're going to take care of business, but UTSA, I mean, I don't they're, – they're a good team, but it's, everybody overlooks them. I mean, they beat Baylor back-to-back -back years, I mean, not too long ago. So, you just never know. But that will be my trap game. Um, all right, well, we're going to get back um, right after these messages. We're going to thank Big Orange Concrete Pumping for that segment. Big Orange Concrete Pumping. They can accommodate any residential or commercial concrete project that you may have in mind. They have one of the biggest lime pumps in the state. They take a lot of pride in their work and they're waiting on your phone call today. Their number is 865-371-3367. Whether you're pumping noise and kneeling or pumping concrete, make sure you roll with the Big Orange. That's Big Orange Concrete Pumping, 865-371-3367. Sixty-seven. Are you looking for a place to tailgate this season? Look no further than the Volunteer Club. Free food, free drinks, free games, and an open bar. Yes, I said open bar. Also, you're going to get things like watch parties, shirts, decals, koozies, exclusive video content, special events, meet and greets, etc. You absolutely cannot beat the Volunteer Club for as little as $5.00. You can join today. Click on my QR code, screenshot my QR code, or message me for a direct link and come tailgate with the best of the best. Go Vols. All right, and we're back. We've, now we're going to do a segment presented by Maxed Out Gym in Oak Ridge, and it's called Start Bench Cut. Basically, we're going to give a subject, um, give three answers, and you've got to start one, which would be, you know, the number one, then you've got a bench one, then you've got a cut one. Um, I like fuck, Mary kill. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Uh, all right, so the Spank and Corbin are going to battle it out here. I'm going to give my answers too, but I think you all. You've got to be the mediator. we got to have someone oh, yeah, here. Oh. we got to have a mediator here of some oh, sorts. That's what I, that's what I do. That's, that's what you that's do. That's what the Vol Daddy does. Vol Daddy. Uh, okay, topic one. Top Tennessee traditions of all time. The ball walk, running through the tee, or Rocky Top? Um, I'm going to go with start Rocky Top because there's no no other school out there uses Rocky Top. No one out. When you hear Rocky Top, it don't even matter if you're listening to the Osborne Brothers. You can't say when it says good old Rocky Top. You have to say woo. It doesn't matter where you are. You hear Rock Top, you think of the orange, you think of the white, you think of the Phil Fulmer, you think of Peyton Manning, you think of uh, Team Mark, you think of Josh Dobbs, you think of it all. You think of that orange and white. And number two, uh, with bench, 
I'm gonna go with running through the tea, and it, it's beautiful. Gives you chills any every time you see that band just split it right open like the Red Sea, like Moses did with that Red Sea. It just parts right open. They run through that tea. But the reason I'm doing run through the tea bench is same thing with my last one. But a bunch of other teams do it. Like Florida, they run through the UF. A bunch of other teams, they run through their school little thing. Just like that's why I'm starting Rocky Top because there's one Rocky Top. There's one and only Rocky Top Tennessee. And then going to the third one, the ball walk. Everybody – even though the Vol Walk is the most amazing thing ever, just seeing the sea of orange and then making that left turn. Oh, yeah, probably, you know, 50, 75,000 fans. Oh, yeah, it, it's crazy. Um, I'd hate to do the Vol Walk backwards walking up that hill. It, it's a pain. <laughs> but, like I said, they, they have gator walks, they have tide walks, they have dog walks. They, they, they probably walk a dog, George. I don't know. They probably got to walk the dog something for the game. Okay. But that, that's mine. That's the order I have in as well. Rocky Top is just special. You hear it, you know, and everybody knows Rocky Top, you yeah. know. And I do get the point of everybody does kind of their their walk. Um, everybody's got their entrance. But Rocky Top is definitely special. Corbin? I'm the same old deal. I mean, Rocky Top. I mean, when you're in them stands, everybody's singing Rocky Top. I mean, it's it's like everybody comes together in oh, one, one motion. Yeah. You feel you feel mm-hmm. that energy. It's that, sad it's not the official fight song, but it's unofficial. Unofficial. Unofficial official fight. Yeah. Number two. Dun, number dun, number dun, two dun. would be uh, okay. running through the tea. Okay. Because I mean, it's just like. You got that build up, and you got all that emotion throughout the day, and everybody just waiting for everybody just run. The, every, I mean, everybody just hopped up, going crazy in the stadium, and everybody just waiting for that moment to happen. And then that moment happens, and oh, they run through the tee. Awesome. I'm telling you, I like running through the tee better at night. I think it looks cool. Oh, it they, they do the lights, all the pyro and stuff. It, it oh awesome. yeah, beautiful TikToks. Okay, so all three of us have uh, we're starting Rocky Top, we're benching running through the tee. And we're cutting the ball walk. That's such to even say. All right, Corbin, who's the worst Tennessee football coach of all time? Butch Jones, Jeremy Pruitt, Derek Dooley. Derek Dooley. Derek Dooley's worst. I mean, I couldn't stand him when he was here. All he was concerned about, oh, I'm wearing orange pants this weekend and stuff like that, and we go out there and lose by 40 points. So you didn't like him sitting on the stool? No. I, I, we couldn't help that one. <laughs> like, uh, then, then he had his daddy in there, and I couldn't stand that either. Deck Dooley just, I swear, he's got to be the worst coach we've ever had. Like, he done nothing for us. <laughs> at least he wore the orange britches. Like, at least let the, I ain't concerned about the orange no, britches. I'm, I'm like concerned team, about winning least football they games. Wore, uh, the, the white on orange look more. Like, at least I'll give the man that. Like, heck fire. If I was concerned about winning. What they wear, I'll be an organ fan. They wear every color in, the, in college foot that you can wear. All right, who, who you got two? Uh, Butch Jones. I mean, Butch, he had he 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 hopped us up, brick by brick. Had so much hope for the team, and he couldn't do couldn't do nothing. I mean, he really couldn't. And what did Pruitt do? What did he do? <laughs> He, he, did, he didn't even hype us up. Perfect. He did way more than Bush did. Uh, what did he do? What did he do besides beat Auburn and a bad Auburn team? What did he do? I will say Bush did beat Georgia, and he did beat Florida in the same year. He beat Georgia twice. twice. He beat Georgia twice. And Pick Howard fumbling that ball in the end yeah. zone, he could have beat him three times. Yeah, he, beat, he did beat Florida. I'm just trying to figure out but, what Pruitt but, did. But Pruitt, I had more confidence in Pruitt. If he hadn't gotten in trouble, I mean – I had a lot of confidence in Pruitt. I was behind Pruitt. I wasn't gonna like throw him out the side. Like what, what he was building with Tennessee was was true. He was actually building a good program with good recruits. I was fired up when we hired Pruitt. I was not. But Jeremy Pruitt's the worst football coach. And Tennessee. Yeah, he's not. He is. Is I I do we get I uh, I <laughs> like. Then I'm going Dooley, and then I'm going Lyle Butch Jones. 
Uh, I don't know how none of y'all have Dooley yet, not as the worst coach of all. I mean, he, he, he's middle of the pack. Said, I mean, he, he was awful, but he scored. He scored awful. Goals. It pisses me off that Shins don't have him remember last. The, remember the LSU game when we stopped him and have like 13 players on the field? Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah, I remember that game. That's when we went back to like the locker room or whatever, and we like oh, was yeah. told we won the game. They was like, oh, come on back out in the field. The play, we do the play. All right. This is going to be a good one. With LeBron getting swept in the playoffs, who do you start? Who do you bench? Who do you cut? Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, LeBron James. Okay. So, I'm going to go with start MJ. He is the greatest basketball player to ever play the game. He's the greatest teammate of all time. Like his players might have thought he was a jerk, but he was pushing them. He pushed every one of them. To their absolute best, um, Larry Bird. But what's there not to say about Larry Bird? The man was he. He transcended a generation. Him and Magic Johnson is what took the NBA to that next level, so Michael could succeed. My thing with Larry Bird, the reason I'd bench him is, I wouldn't say he was a bad team player, but like he just, he was always in the media. Like he was all he was always saying something, chirping at someone in the media, and like with Michael, you never really got them zingers or whatever. Michael just wanted to play the game of basketball. That's all he wanted to do. And then LeBron, even though I am a Lakers fan, I do like the Lakers. LeBron James, I get it. The man could play any position you put him out there with. I get it. One on one, he could probably beat him. He probably could, just with his size, skill set. He takes Bird one on one back. Um, he don't. But I, I think he's laying on the court looking for a referee to try to, and yeah. Bird is nowhere. To you can't tell me that LeBron baby James. Take it, baby. Yeah, you can't tell me that LeBron James does not have a better clutch gene than Larry Bird or MJ. You just can't tell me. Clutch? Like he does not. Like. Oh okay. Yeah. So, so you're saying he's not as clutch? No, he's okay. not as clutch. Was, okay. Yeah, don't worry. Don't okay. don't don't burn the house down Ooh. with the chickens in it, brother. Got my heart um, there for a minute. But, no, I got MJ, Bird, James. Corbin? Start with Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan's the greatest player to ever play. Uh-huh. Because the NBA back then when Michael Jordan was playing is a whole different NBA than what we watch today. And, I don't, and I'm not hating on the NBA today. I've had NBA League Pass since 2007. I watch NBA every single day. And I still – and I love the NBA, but you can just watch and you can tell the – they do not play today like they did when Michael Jordan. When Michael Jordan played, they was men. Oh, it was rough. They was men when Michael Jordan mm-hmm. was there. Okay? Now, as for the bench aspect, LeBron James. You bench LeBron. You're cutting Larry Bird. No. Wait. Oh, there's cut. Okay, it's bench cut. Cut LeBron. Okay. Get rid of LeBron. Yeah, I 100% agree. I've got the exact same. I think everybody's got it here. LeBron, LeBron, like LeBron is a uh, he's a terrible teammate. I mean, he, every team he goes on, he controls. He's and it's in his contract pretty much. He's got to control that team. Mhm. I agree. And, and that's why he he can't win a championship. He's he's won, how many championships LeBron won? He's won two with he's the Heat, one with the Cavs, and oh, one with the Lakers. He's one with four. For. And that's the only four he's ever going to win. And he's never going to win no more because he's a little crybaby ass is all he is. And he wants to bitch and, oh, he, he wants to bitch and complain. And I bet you wouldn't say this in front of his face. LeBron? Yeah. You want bet? Well, I bet you got a couple of beers. Give him a couple of Miller Lights. <laughs> yeah, give me a couple of Miller Lights and I'll tell him whatever I want to say. He'll be coming off the top rope, baby. Yeah. Just LeBron, LeBron is just – he, he is not – I would say he's the top five greatest player of all time. Yes, he is. But he is not even next to Michael Jordan's level. Not next to Magic Johnson's I think level. I think Kobe Bryant is better. He's not I even – he is nothing near Kobe Bryant. Okay. Nothing near Kobe Bryant. To me, Kobe Bryant's number two all time. Co- 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 and Kobe – and, you know, I would say Kobe was a dirty player, but he's a great player. So, look, sometimes everybody, – Everybody knows Kobe's old elbow he used to have. Sometimes you gotta be dirty. You got to. Like people nowadays, they want to be like, "Hey, well, let's play with class." It's like, no. It's like, let me tell you, what gets you wins, domination. But I, that, that's what gets you wins in any sport you do. You got to dominate. 
That's, That's what Spanky, Spanky does in our iPhone. That's right. But Undefeated. But you know, you know what Laban is? He's a choke artist. He's, he's a choke artist. He, he, he is a... Yeah, he's not clutch. And whenever I, I misunderstood Spanky, I was really about to come across the table, which I thought he said. I, I, thought, I thought he was saying LeBron was clutch, and I was like, man, you lost your mind. No, no, no. All right, yeah. next topic. Start bench cut. Which game on Tennessee's upcoming schedule scares you the most? Georgia, Alabama, or Florida? Um, uh, it's gonna go. Uh, Bama scares me the most. Okay. Uh, then it's gonna go. Um, Georgia, then Florida. Gordon. Georgia, Alabama, Florida. This is the first one we're all gonna disagree on. I've got. Florida scaring me the most. I know what Georgia's gonna bring to the table. I'm. Pretty aware of what Saban's going to bring to the table. What scares me the most is if we don't handle business in Gainesville, how does the rest of the season go? Yeah, good point. That's, that's, a, that's good what point. scares me the most. Uh, that's a key game. It is a key game. That's why it's the third Saturday in September. <laughs> Starts the year, baby. Uh, I thought you were going to talk about Alabama there for a second. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Third, no, third <laughs> Saturday in September. <laughs> then I've got Alabama – and then I've got Georgia. I, did, I you know, I know what Georgia's going to bring to the table, but Bama, you know, I, I don't want that going south again. So that, that's the reason I put. That's the reason I'm benching Bama. Um, I'm going to cut Georgia. All right, Tennessee's best off, alternate helmet: the dark mode, the smoky gray, or the orange helmet. Uh, well, I'm a connoisseur of uniforms and attires and I'm going to go with yes an expert at it um organ fan yeah oh no I don't like color green uh, but I'm going to go with I get it people on Twitter John thinks it's bad luck I get it but it's the whole orange it's the orange helmets are the best okay I love them I love the orange sickles and I just cannot wait for the day that we see orange on orange, on orange, on orange, and I swear to everything on me, if we don't have orange socks on, orange cleats, and everybody <laughs> in that stadium is not wearing orange, please, if you go to Neyland Stadium and they say there's an orange out, do not wear white. You uncultured swine. Wear orange. Especially if they wear all orange on that field, we wear all orange. What's a swine? <laughs> Flu? Swine it, it, it grinds my gears just to see people. It's like, let's have an orange out. Well, I'm, I'm going to wear black today. Why was, not? You, was you old enough for the swine flu? I don't know, Corbin. I'm fired <laughs> up right now. I, I agree. It's aggravating to see, you know, we try to check her. You've got the handful that just try to ruin it. So. It's not like it's the 90s, people. We're all pretty connected. <laughs> all right, so uh, you're starting orange helmet. What are you benching? I'm going to bench Smoky Gray. Smoky Gray, it's it's a nice helmet. It's got the cool design to it. A lot of detail. A lot of detail. A lot of detail. A lot of hard work put into it. Um, it's just like any player you got to put on the bench. You know, works very hard at it. Sometimes ain't gonna get the job done for you, but it it's got the heart. So you. I'm gonna cut the black helmets. You're cutting dark mode. Even though I like the dark mode, but the reason I'm gonna cut the dark mode is. <laughs> It's it's this, it's black. It's what's wrong with black? I it's just I don't know. It's like I like all black uniforms. I really do. But when you put it up against the other two, it's it's your third option. Look, here's my hot take. I'm gonna rank the black helmet over the white helmet. Oh no, you can't you can't do that. I'm doing that. Do I'm that. doing it. Okay. Look, we've suffered through so many years seeing. Them men run out on the field in that white helmet. It's time for a change. You're crazy. You can't. That's the OG. You can't. Okay. Corbin, your turn. Starting Smoky Gray, just because, I mean, it represents the Smoky Mountains. Great uniforms. It all goes together. It's so great. And they're going to change it this year, too, because they got new. They're going to have a new Smoky Gray uniform every year now. Every year, for, yeah. Let's hope they keep the helmet. But I believe in Nike. Nike is a great, great contributor to Tennessee, and they make great products. I miss Adidas. Huh? 
I miss Adidas. Miss Adidas. You, you miss Adidas? Yeah, probably because I work for an Adidas store. But that's beside the point. I didn't, that's, I didn't mind. I didn't like like the kind of the last little ride of Adidas. But other than that, I mean, I always liked it. Yeah, I'm not an Adidas okay, fan. Okay, Corbin, who, what, which helmet are you benching? Black. Benching black. Black. I mean, I love. So you're the gonna black. cut the orange? Yeah. What? I'm not. I'm not a big fan of it. What color hat you got on right there, son? It's orange. That's our color. You got to take pride in that thing. An all orange helmet just, to me, it just, it's it's kind of That just, thing is beautiful. It is beautiful over there. Look, I'm, it, it's kind of, it's, it's plain. Look, it's plain. It is not plain. Look, you can't get this on the market anywhere else. You got to find, there are so many different shades. Orange right here. <laughs> oh, Look at yeah. that. <laughs> oh, I got your belt's off. It's, pl- it's, it's, like pl- it's, like, it's like a practice helmet. No, it is not a practice helmet. I'm about to show you what a practice helmet looks like. And man, when I practice my beatings on you with this helmet. Now, I'm a three time karate black belt Hall of Famer. I don't you don't come on, Joe. Papa. Look, this is a beautiful <laughs> helmet right here. Look, it, there's something in the orange. That's why th- when Zach Brown. Or Zach Brown <laughs> saw this helmet. He's like, "There's something in the orange right here." It's a beautiful helmet. I'm leaving this. It's on plain. My, it's on plain. This desk right it's here. plain. It's plain. It's, it's beautiful. Just plain. That black helmet right there is beautiful. The I, gr- I'd hate to see what your taste in women is if you think that thing's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'm about to make you mad as well, Spanky, because I'm starting with dark mode. That black is just hard as it gets. Um, I'm not hating on the black. I like the black. It's just I'm not hating on any of them. I love them. I when love you them. put it up against this beautiful thing and that, we well, ain't got a smoky gray one. But when you're putting them up against each other, it's it's hard to pick one. All right. Well, I'm benching the smoky gray. I love it. I'm not not hating on any of them. And then I'm gonna cut the orange helmet. There you go. But all right, that is our start bench cut segment presented by Maxed Out Gym, and we'll be right back. Maxed Out Gym is hands down the best gym in East Tennessee. Located in Oak Ridge, locally owned and operated by Ryan Carson. Listen, this gym is not your normal big chain gym. 24-7 access, child care, nutrition plans, private training rooms, and their personal trainers are truly first class. We're not talking about John Doe across the street who spent a few hours taking an online course and then printed his certificate. They offer the best classes in the area and even host big time powerlifting competitions. For my power lifters, you have to experience the back room. There's no words to describe it, you just have to experience it. That's Maxed Out Gym. If you're having second thoughts about changing gyms, canceling that membership, going through the hassle, I know you've seen the picture of me and Coach Hopple together when I got to show him his face on my leg. Have you seen the thunder thighs on the vol, Daddy? You don't get thighs like that by not going to Maxed Out Gym. It's time to throw away the gold membership, throw away the Planet Fitness membership, throw away the National Fitness membership, and it's time to join Maxed Out Gym. Check them out on Facebook right now. Megan's Cleaning Services is here to meet all of your home cleaning needs. From a basic clean to a deep clean, from a one-time clean to a bi-weekly clean, Megan's Cleaning Service is here for you. We provide residential, commercial, and rental cleanings for the best prices. Serving Knox, Anderson, Scott, Roan, and Morgan counties, give me a like on my Facebook page. My phone number is 423-539-7266. Again, that's Megan's Cleaning Services at 423-539-7266. Thank you. And we're back. Second talking point of the day presented by Trident HydroClean. What is Tennessee's most important game going into 2023? Georgia. Georgia? It's it's Georgia. It's It's the game that... Georgia's number one team. And like an old old man used to say one time, to be the man, you got to beat the man. They're the current national champs. You got to beat them. So, that's the most important game to me. Who do you got, Corbin? Alabama. I mean, we got to ba- back up what we done last year. I mean, Alabama's going to be good this year. 
They may be on a little bit of a down de decline, but we got to prove that last year was no fluke. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Florida. I know I kind of touched on it earlier, but we haven't won the swamp in 20 years. Tennessee has to get this shit changed. And my reasoning isn't because of a 20-year drought in the sewer down there. But it's because, you know, if we, if we drop one here to a probably the worst team Tennessee's seen from Florida, and I don't know, probably Long ever. Time. Um, I mean, what it, happens next? And then my next question is if, we, if we're not beating Florida in the, in the swamp this year, then, then when, when's it going to happen? Yeah. Um, so, so that's my – Because Florida, like, they won't stay down long just because no. of them being in the state of Florida alone. They'll, they won't be down yeah, long. Yeah, the, the recruiting and resources, everything down there is the, the, the best, best hope, hope, I mean, for them to – I mean, I want them to stay down forever. But, like, it, it is, is Napier just, you know. I don't think he's the guy. Yeah, I, I don't either, but that, that's Tennessee's bet as far as the state now. That's a different subject. Which game is a must win for Tennessee this season? Florida. You got Florida? Florida's must win. Okay. Um, because, like you said, it's – it may it, – every year it's it's make or break your season. Corbin? I still got Alabama on this. Okay. I mean, what we done last year, beat Alabama, tore the goalpost down, raised hell on top of Knoxville. Pretty much tore Knoxville down. Yeah. I mean, we cannot walk into Alabama this year – and lose and give them like the satisfaction of taking back what we done last year because Alabama fans are just so you're just wanting to hold on you don't want you don't want to give this back to them I do not want to give this back to Alabama because their fan base would just throw it right at us and I 100% agree with that my my number one would be Florida but I'm gonna I'll give you South Carolina as well we just cannot let the Gamecocks beat us twice in a row. We can't let Beamer Ball beat us. Just hearing the term Beamer Ball makes me want to puke. Um, he's just such a little dweeb, man, and we can't let him beat us. Anymore. Can't stand it. If D-Bag, you know, was in the dictionary, had a picture by it, I mean, it would be, it would be Shane Beamer getting that mayonnaise just poured all over him. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I said it earlier, but – Josh Heupel is going to clap Shane Beamer's cheeks in Neyland Stadium. All right, Corbin, which game are you looking forward to the most? Uh, probably Florida, Okay. honestly, because I want to beat them down the swamp. I do, too. Oh, yeah, we got to change that. All right, Spanky? I want to go with uh, – South Carolina and Georgia, probably going to be the two most rowdiest yeah. environments in all of college football this year. It's going to be pretty exciting. I agree. This, this is going to sound a little cliche for me, but I'm, I'm going to say, say the, the first one. one. I don't hate to give, give a coach's answer there, but I'm just ready to, to get the season underway. I'm ready to be in Nashville. I'm ready to be tailgating, going downtown, uh, seeing all the beautiful orange people together in one place. But I'll give you number two. I'm really looking forward to Kirby and his mutts coming to Neyland Stadium. And um, all right, so all of us have Tennessee going 11 and one this season so far as of what the 26th of May. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll see how the optimism changes. You know. It'll it'll it, when 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 the season gets started and we get started, uh, we start we start. Thank you, going to be preaching. 12-0. He's going to be like, Oregon's got them uniforms. I got, oh, I got faith in them. All right, that was our second main talking point presented by Trident Hydro Clean. We love our sponsors. Can't thank them enough. Thank you, Jacob Haney, with Trident Hydro Clean, and we'll be right back. Trident Hydro Clean, your exterior home cleaning professionals, house, roof, driveway, concrete, gutters, and much more. Trident Hydro Clean, 865-363-8815. They've been in business for five years 
and they have a five-star Google rating and a five-star Facebook rating. Call Jacob today. Give your house, driveway, and or patio the care it deserves. 100% satisfaction guarantee. See the difference between a professional and an amateur cleaning. That's 865-363-8815. ZNN Concrete are the professionals you need to call for all of your concrete finishing needs. Driveways, sidewalks, curbs, garage pads, footers, and much more, they can do it all. No job is too big, no job is too small. Give ZNN Concrete a call today, 865-360-6176, residential or commercial. That's ZNN Concrete, 865-360. Three six zero six one seven six. And we're back. Next, we've got the duel. The duel is presented by Premier Excavation. Go ahead, make my day. I'll kiss your boots if you can do it. But to be the man, you gotta beat the man. This is Sparta. The Spank and Corbin will battle it out over a few tough questions. And the winner not only gets bragging rights, but they get some hardware to drag around with them for the week. Now, we've got a belt on the way, a custom American steel balls deep belt. But for now, we've got this bad boy, the Walmart special. No, $20 special. No, $20 special. It was a Halloween costume, and that's what you all get this week. So. No, chopped liver. Yeah, you got to get better. All right, so... Need more sponsors. Yeah. Go. With Tennessee Athletics receiving its back-to-back -back SEC Sports Championship, when has Tennessee Athletics been better? Um, I said it earlier in the broadcast. Um, I don't think there's really ever been a time better for University of Tennessee Athletics. I don't. I think this is not where we need to be. We got a long way to go, but a short time to get there. So eastbound, just watch those smoky run. I agree with Spanky, but the past two years with Tennessee football, I mean, what, what Josh Hopper has done has been unbelievable compared to what we've ha had the past since Fulmer left. Tennessee basketball with Wick Barnes has just been on top of the game. I mean, he ha they had their flaws, but at the end of the day, we're still ranked always top 15. We are, it seems like every year we get to be ranked number one. Oh, Daddy Barnes, I think he's the one who started the trend. All right, so Tennessee. Tennessee baseball, too. Mm -hmm. yep. Last year, fantastic. This year, really great, really good. Got a lot of flaws, but we can get them worked out, hopefully, in this NCAA tournament. Just I've never saw a time in my life where Tennessee football, basketball, and baseball has been just like – we're late. We're late right now. It's All like, right, so, so so far, so good. You all are in agreement. We're in agreement on this one. Is, has not been better than right now. Tennessee football is now 95 days away. Who is the best player to wear number 95 for the Big Orange? Um, I had to do some extended research here because, you know, out of all the great players that's wore the orange and white, there's been a select few to wear number 95. And I'm going to go with a um, guy drafted in the NFL, uh, Antonio Richardson. Okay. Uh, lineman played 2013 uh, for Tennessee. Got drafted uh, 2014 to the Minnesota Vikings. Corbin, who you got? Tony McDaniel. He had 33 tackles at Tennessee. He went to the NFL. Had a pretty good NFL career. Didn't play long. But what had, else happened? He had 83 tackles in the NFL. Anything else? Like, you know. Spanky's just, just poking, poking the Corbin right now. Um, I'm just okay. else. I'm, a, I'm a three time Cardi Black Belt Hall of Famer. He just and doesn't I, want I, I, I don't, don't think I don't care about him. He he may be a pro wrestler, but he don't he don't want no cards. Spanky Spanky is probably gonna be an expert on this next question. Which NASCAR driver <laughs> outside which NASCAR driver outside of the current top ten has the best chance? To win the Cup Series. I ain't got a clue because I don't care about NASCAR. Like, if I wanted to watch a bunch of cars race each other, I would go up on I-75 
or I would go out in the yard, or I'd just go somewhere. I don't care about left turns. The only exciting part of NASCAR races is either when the, the drunk people are fighting and it's a meme, or uh, the, the wrecks, and it's pretty cool. Hope no one gets hurt, but that's the only exciting part about NASCAR. They're going the same way every dang time. Every time they're going the same way. It ain't like Mario Kart, where at least Mario went left, right, up, and down through the middle. Like, I just don't care about NASCAR. No, never did. NASCAR died when Dale died. No, don't, that, that's not true. Oh, yes, it is true. No, it's not. It's not been the same since. And I was only one years old then. Uh, you're talking like the NASCAR expo over here. So. Okay, well, go on, left turn, Captain. Corbin, the blood's bull, man. Uh, Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott. Chase, I mean, he's outside top ten. He's got a playoff. He's got a waiver to make the playoffs if he makes it. He's got to win a race to make it because he missed because he was snowboarding and broke his leg and had to miss a few races. But when you say Del NASCAR died when Dale Senior died, he did. It did not. Yes, it did. No, it didn't. The highest viewership in NASCAR was two thousand four to two thousand eight. Oh my yeah, Jeff Gordon. Jeff Gordon. There you go. I'll, I'll give you Jeff Gordon. Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson. I'll give you them. But other than that, nah. Nah. Still averages four and a half million viewers to this day on TV. Well, probably because they're using the old uh, satellite ones. And they're just the antennas, you know, <laughs> old people watching NASCAR. And I, and, I, and I will be at the Coca-Cola 600 Sunday. Sold out. Racetrack. Hey, I'll be somewhere better on Sunday. Where's that? I'm on my couch not watching NASCAR. <laughs> Well, I'll be in the damn stands of NASCAR race, and I'll be drunker than hell living the redneck dream over there. Well, I, I'd rather be passed out in my bed than at a NASCAR I may race. even see a couple sets of titties at the NASCAR race. Well, you can do that lucky. on your phone for free, brother. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. How far, how far does Tennessee baseball make it in the NCAA tournament? I'm going to go with uh, regionals. Regionals is a good one. So they're getting out early. Corbin? First round college board series. I think, uh, like I said earlier, like basketball, like when, when, we, when we are good, we don't perform, but it seems like whenever we uh, are like mid, we perform. That's just been the way it's been. Okay, moving on. Indianapolis Colts owner Jim Ursay leaves Peyton Manning. Off of his top five player of all time. I, st list. I still cannot believe this. The, uh, the last for me. Peyton Manning a top five NFL player? No question. Is this even a discussion? Like, really? Peyton Manning is, without a doubt, top two or three at least players, quarterbacks, whatever you got to put. He's there. He's done his resume. He's done everything he can do in the NFL. He's prepared himself on and off the field for it. He is the ultimate team leader. He is the sheriff, by God. He is the sheriff. Like, he is the sheriff. Corbin? Top five greatest of all time? Yes. Yes. Why are you stopping? But, but, why, why are you thinking about it? You shouldn't think about it. Well, You should know. you got to know Peyton Manning is the greatest of all time. Biggest choke artist in the history of the game. Are you kidding me? Proven fact. Are you kidding me? He he can't make up for Pro his defense. Proven fact. He cannot make up. Look. He's like LeBron James. Can't win a championship for nothing. Can't win a championship. For championship. Yeah, he won Are two you kidding me? One one in 07. One one when we retired with Broncos. Look, okay, look. Ha, 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 look, don't you bash the Broncos. Look. Football is not like basketball. On basketball, as soon as you get done with offense, you can go down and physically play defense. I'll tell you, he's behind On you. football, Peyton Manning could not go out there and cover a wide receiver, or he couldn't sack a quarterback. He's behind Tom Brady. He's behind Drew Brees. Behind Drew Brees? Are you kidding me? Drew's got hey, – Drew's He's got one Super Bowl. He's got more stats than Peyton does. Don't matter. At the end of the day, it's about the rings. His consistency was better, too. Oh, dear my gosh. Oh, my God. You got to be kidding me. <laughs> Peyton Manning, look, the man broke his freaking neck and came back and won a Super Bowl. I don't care if he broke his neck or not. <laughs>
I, I, I don't even know what I'm doing. Uh, my um, winner for the duel is going to have to be this fight because I cannot stand any fake Manning fashion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you. Thank you. Even though this is not what I want, I'm, I'm looking for bigger and better things. Like, I hate the color maroon. Like, but... I think we can make this a little more pretty. Oh, it's, it's, it's on the way. Uh, that was the duel presented by Premier Excavation. We'll be right back after this commercial. Do you have dreams about what your property could be? Whether it's driveways, ponds, septic, new home construction, or even forestry mulching, let us earn your business and make your property dreams come true. Call Premier Excavation at 865-766-9408. You can also find us on Facebook or Instagram. Thank you for supporting small businesses that support you. Again, that's Premier Excavation at 865-766-9408. And we're back. Next, we've got the Jersey Countdown. Uh, basically, we're going to count down uh, our favorite players' jersey numbers from 99 to, to one days. And that's presented by DNM Fence Company. Once the Jersey Countdown is over, it will be a, our keys to to the game that Tennessee is going to play that week, whether it be football, basketball, baseball, whatever. Um, so we're at day 95 now, but we're going to start back at 99 and, and give our give our player numbers. So I'm going to start it. I'm going to go with Ben Martin. Um, four seasons in Tennessee, 2007 through 2011, making 81 tackles for the balls, battled through some, some injuries, but uh, great career. Uh, I'm going to go with Jonathan uh, Combo, uh, number one player of the 2015-16 mm, uh, Jugo class. Um, came in, helped Tennessee out really good on the defensive side of the ball, really. He came in, he, he showed why he was the number one Jugo player. Where is he now? I believe he's with. XFL or the yeah, XFL or Super USF. Crazy, yeah. Oh yeah, athlete. freak athlete. Corbin. Casey Rogers. He once said I wore number ninety nine because I wanted to be the last and on the roster, but number one in the Vols hoist. All right, you can't beat that. All right. There you go. Ninety eight. I'm gonna go. And I don't think you can go any other direction than Big John Henderson. That's right. Um, Played in 2000 and 2001, All-SEC, back-to-back All-American, SEC Defensive Player of the Year, Outland Trophy winner, uh, 10 seasons in the NFL, Pro Bowl selection, number 98, John Henderson. That's who I had. Uh, I think we all got John Henderson. Probably got the most epic pregame ritual I've ever seen. Come on, Joe. Bam. Thank you. Just letting a grown man smack you right in the mouth. Getting him all fired up, wanting blood to come out of him so we can get fired up, ready to go play I some think football. We need to let, do a, no, we're, I we're, think we're, we need to do a reenactment here, and and you're John Henderson, and Corbin is the trainer. <laughs> oh, sh Joe, that ain't good enough. Come on, Joe. Ah, thank you, baby. Thank you. You're making blood come from my damn mouth. That's I'm talking about, baby. You got to make blood come to the mouth. You can't just smack me and don't hit me hard. That boy's when you hit a motherfucker, you hit that motherfucker. Let's kick the ass, motherfucker. Kick the ass. Let's go. No, I think we're good. We ain't going to do that. I hate to break the set. Okay, number 97. I got Malik Jackson. 2010-2011, all SEC first team. Average 4.6 tackles a game. And a solid NFL career with Denver Broncos. Uh, I got Malik Jackson as well. Won the Super Bowl with Denver Broncos. Played a had a really good career at Tennessee and a really good NFL career. Had me the Malik Jackson too. He had 48 tackles in one season. I mean, that's unreal. <laughs> yeah, he's a he's, he's a stud man. Had, had a great NFL career. Uh, number 96. I'm going with Kevin Mays. Um, a lot of people might not know this, but he actually played defense before offense. He was an all-SEC guard, uh, 1991 to 92. He was a defensive tackle. Um, the Kingston native was also on the SEC academic honor roll. Um, also, just a shout out to his current son, Cooper, who's the starting center for Tennessee, and his older son, Cade, who's with the Carolina Panthers. So I had to. 
I I had uh, Chad Cunningham. Punter. Punter. Played Punter. from 07 to 2010. Also got drafted by the Tennessee Titans. Yeah, he was, uh, he was pretty popular for a while. How long did he play for the Titans? About three years? Uh, something like that. Yeah, I'm not 100%. I'm off the Titans. I pulled for him, but... Yeah. I think he's like, like three don't. years or something That's like right. that. That's right. Okay, and then number 95. I'm going with current player, Dejon Terry. Red shirt senior, 6'4", 321 pounds. He joined the Vols in 2021. He transferred from Kansas. Um, seen him quite a bit last year, but I'm very optimistic about what he can do this year. Uh, I got Antonio Richardson, um, like we said earlier during the duel. Um... 2011, 2013, got drafted by the Vikings, and had a pretty good Tennessee career and pretty okay NFL career. Yeah, like I said earlier, Tony McDaniel. Tony McDaniel. All right, that was uh, our Jersey countdown presented by DNM Fence Company. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your man here, the Spank. Like myself, DNM Fencing are the best in the business today. They can install wood, chain link, vinyl. Picket, composed metal, barbed wire, heck, bring them bamboo sticks, and they can install them things for you too. DNM Fencing, do it right the first time. Their numbers are 865 435 4515 or 865 387 1026. Give my friend Ted a call today. That's DNM Fencing. It's to tailgate this season. Look no further than the Volunteer Club. Free food, free drinks, free games, and an open bar. Yes, I said open bar. Also, you're going to get things like watch parties, shirts, decals, koozies, exclusive video content, special events, meet and greets, etc. You absolutely cannot beat the Volunteer Club for as little as $5 you can join today. Click on my QR code, screenshot my QR code, or message me. For a direct link and come tailgate with the best of the best. Go Vols. And we're back. Now we've got Florida, Alabama, or Georgia. This is presented by CND Tire Oak Ridge. Um, basically, I'm going to pick five crazy stories in the state of Florida, Alabama, Georgia, or other. The Spank and Corbin are going to guess which state that happened in and, um, and why they think that it happened there. So, First, First off, off man gets, gets tired of waiting at hospital, hospital steals the ambulance, and drives home. I'm going to go Florida. Florida? You have to speak, speak up. up. Say it with your chest. chest. Florida! Hey! Corbin? I'm going to say Alabama because one time in NASCAR race back in like 1972, an Alabama fan stole the pace car and drove around the track about three times before they made a roadblock and stopped his damn ass. Lake County, Florida. Danny Kanishi was taken to the hospital for being drunk and suicidal after a neighbor called 911. Lake County Sheriff's Officer Sergeant Jones said, you're, You've been taken to the hospital because you're drunk, and now you're in a stolen ambulance driving it back home. Danny parked the ambulance at his neighbor's house, the one that called 911 on him, and then went back to his house and hid in the trunk of his car. Hell, you gotta <laughs> give brother props, I guess. Like, getting revenge on his neighbor. Hell yeah. yeah. You ever <laughs> had anybody, <laughs> any neighbor calling on you, Corbin? Uh, being too drunk? Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if he's like looking in the back of the to at least make sure, make sure nobody's back, back there. there. Yeah, yeah, ain't got a good point. All, All right, right, next we've, we've got, got man arrested for breaking into jail to hang out with friends. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, <laughs> uh, Alabama. 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 Corbin? Georgia. 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 All right. Indian, Indian River, River County, County, Florida. Florida. Patrick, Patrick Ring was arrested, was arrested for ramming his car into the jail's front door. They, they caught him when he tried to climb the fence to get, get to his, his friends. friends. <laughs> but he, he got, got caught in the razor wire. wire. He, he admitted to being high on Tlaka. Surprise, surprise. Uh, and he just wanted to, to visit his friends in jail. What the hell are they doing down in Florida? What's Flocka? I have no clue what Flocka is. Sounds like some damn prison shit. 
I think they give some of this to some of my friends who are lacking the loyalty. Yeah. I mean, that's nice. loyalty right there, man. Yeah. But Apparently it was a holiday, too, so. Yeah, well, it is. Season, season the giving, I guess. Yeah. Season's greetings. <laughs> okay, next we've got Man Tries to Rob a GameStop with a clear plastic bag on his head. I'm going to go with uh, Georgia. Go with Georgia. Corbin? Alabama. Alabama. St. Mary's, Georgia. Georgia. Um, Damn, I mean, did he think like a disguise was... I guess there is a devil in the sky. (laughs) A disguise was mandatory, I think, to to rob him. should have just like wear his name tag. Probably. Apparently he did get away from the police and um, they have yet to find him. Oh, really? Yeah, so I guess he's... Smarter than Man, how long ago was this? He could be on the loose He's right still now. On the loose. He's oh, still looking He's for a PlayStation. He could be watching right now. He never <laughs> play that game with. Yeah. Yeah, that's, 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 that's an old one. He's going to have to rob another one. So I guess uh, the police are smarter than this guy down in, uh, in dog country. Yeah. Oof, oof, oof. Speaking of dog country, Georgia fans, what the hell? <laughs> this is a whole other animal, man. Yeah, yeah, we, we uh, uh, I cannot stand being down there. Grown men acting like dogs with collars on their necks, like barking at you in their hands and knees. I've never in my life. Chevron, Chevron gas, gas station, station clerk, clerk shows, shows up, up to work, work open the store, and finds a naked man standing on top of the ice cream machine. Alabama. <laughs> Uh, That's Alabama. Alabama. Right Alabama. Alabama. Why y'all calling it Usually naked people in, in Alabama. There's some Alabama. about, yeah. It's like getting naked. Uh, yeah, I guess, yeah. Elmore, Elmore County, Alabama. Alabama. Yeah. The clerk the ran to the car to call police. When, when police arrived, the man threw his hands up and said he was thirsty. <laughs> Gas station nozzles <laughs> were ripped off. Trash cans <laughs> tossed <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Large gas fields, broken windows, bathrooms destroyed, bathroom sink water running with electric electronics. Well, that water bill will be high. He also sprayed the fire extinguisher all over the store. Damn, no wonder he was thirsty. I just gave the man a lot of work, man. I just gave the man a drink. It's more work than I done all week. The police say they possibly found some meth inside the suspect's vehicle. Uh, you uh, think, think maybe, maybe this, this is what Nick Saban is uh, feeding his players down there in Alabama. Probably, man. Yeah, that's why I'm, that's why they go and feed. They on the meth. They on the meth down there, man. They're, they're getting in a lot of trouble lately. Maybe they're, they're getting caught with it like this guy. Man denies drinking and driving. Swears he only swig bourbon at stop signs. 24 hours later. <laughs> Gorman, it's not drinking if you're not driving. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, Evan. <laughs> it took me to get I'm going with Florida. Going with Florida. Georgia. Going Georgia. All right, Indian County, Florida. The sheriff's deputies were calling the McDonald's. Uh, the guy told the officers. He was, he was only, only drinking, drinking at stop signs and stoplights. <laughs> uh, they told 69-year-old Earl Stevens his eyes were red and speech was slurred. He replied, well, I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> Thank you to my great friend Zach at CND Tire for letting us do this fun segment. That was Florida, Alabama, Georgia, or other, presented by CND Tire experts for nearly all of your vehicle needs located in the heart of oak ridge at 164 fairbanks road they've got a 4.8 out of 5 star rating and that's very hard to do in the tire business tire installation wheel alignment wheel balancing tire rotation tire repair brake changes oil changes hell they'll even paint your back porch i've known zach since he was in diapers we went to church together we went to school together we played football together He's been changing tires since he's been in diapers. Give them a call today, 865-483-7455. Like them on Facebook. That's C&D Tire, 865-483-7455. 
Hey y'all, it's the Vob Daddy. We're doing a huge giveaway for the season opener in Nashville versus Virginia. A pair of tickets, four rows off the field. All you have to do is join up for the volunteer club. You should already be a member, but here's your chance to join and win some tickets at the same time. The higher membership you get, the more entries you're gonna get to win the tickets. Refer a friend, I'll double your chances to win. We will do the giveaway live on our show. Remember, you have to use my link. Screenshot that QR code or get on my Facebook, my TikTok, my Instagram, whatever. Join today. Go Vols. All right, then we're back. We're going to close out the show. Um, hope we did all right. How do y'all think we did overall? I, I think we did pretty good. You know, for our first show, heck, I'm on the show, so you know it's it. Like, not, not bad it's for a hot ticket. It's, it's it is. It's the hottest ticket in town. Not bad for beta test number one. Beta test number one. I liked it. It was, uh, it was all right. We got balls deep tonight. That's we did get balls deep. We did. We sure did. Pretty good Pretty good arguments and stuff. And Drew Brees is better than Peyton Manning. We oh, found that shut out. Shut up. <laughs> just, just stop. Just, just yeah, stop. Just. Spanky's still learning how the audio works over there banging around. I bet people at home. I'm sorry. Taking, right? their, taking their earbuds out right now. <laughs> Uh, so what was y'all's favorite part? Uh, the scheduling part. Scheduling part was cool. I li- I like that a lot. The uh the part with the uh, stuff that we done with the uh, battle, well, not the battles, but the, uh, the duel. The duel, yeah, the, the duel. duel. You gotta get that belt next week. I'm gonna get that belt. Nah, yeah, hold up your britches. Like I'm just letting you hold. Up. I'm letting him hold on that fake one until we get that. Until we get the real oh, one. Oh, <laughs> All right, well, uh, we'll see y'all again. Not sure if we're going to do a live one next or might try to get a little more practice at the pre-recorded one. But uh, for those of y'all that do listen, we, we do appreciate it and uh, hope you listen again. Thank you to the, all the sponsors that sponsored this show. Yeah. We do appreciate you. And everybody that tunes in, we appreciate you too. I appreciate everybody. Share us, like us, just tell everybody about us. Let's get everybody listening, everybody watching. Yeah, we're, we're pretty raw right now, but I think we're, we'll get better with time. But last and not least, everybody, let's get balls deep. <laughs> Go balls. See y'all. Go balls. <laughs>